today you're at Station One. We are at 1300 Burnett Avenue. A lot of people will call this the one across from McFarland Clinic, so if you're giving directions and asking which one, which station is which, that's a good descriptor for this one. Hi, I'm Karen Tapper. I'm a shift commander with the Ames Fire Department. Thank you so much for coming today. Here today with B-Shift, so the whole group is going to be able to take you around the station and show you all the different rooms and the apparatus and their gear and everything that they do. Uh, station One houses the administration, so it's our headquarters. The chief is at Station One, two deputy chiefs, a training officer, and all three shift commanders are all housed out of the station. Uh, so it's a good place to come if you need to talk to, about anything that has to do with something that the crews can't help you with. The fire chief for the city of Ames is Chief Richard Higgins, and this is his office. He does a fantastic job of being around every day and meeting with the crews and being able to answer all the questions that we have. Um, he does a great job of just really making sure that the community is taken care of and that his people are taken care of as well. As I mentioned earlier, we have two deputy chiefs at fire station number one. This is Deputy Chief Allen, and he is a deputy chief of operations. So he oversees the day-to-day -day operations for all three different shifts. The shift commanders report to him every day, and he helps us with all of our needs as far as response and our general operations. This is Deputy Chief Hackett, and he is the deputy chief of support. Uh, what support means is that he really works with all of the items that make our jobs work, uh, such as radios, our computers, our firehouse programs. Uh, he works a lot very closely with IT. All of Story County just recently got new radios, and that's been a huge undertaking of his for the last couple of years. Uh, but he's been instrumental in just about every upgrade that we've had with any system that we've had. He also works closely with the shift commanders in maintaining the quality of our structure. So if we have something that goes down or need a new HVAC system or something like that, he works closely with the people that have to get that done. In addition to working with the radios, uh, dispatch, and the other systems at the departments, he oversees the fire inspector. Uh, the fire inspector will meet with him quite often and bounce ideas off of him as well. Uh, so he's very instrumental in our fire inspection side of things. We are fortunate to have one training officer on our department and he is responsible for scheduling all of the training and certifications that we need to get. Some of that training is a huge undertaking and takes quite a bit of time. So in addition to creating huge programs like that, uh, he schedules day-to-day -day training as far as EMS auto extrication, all the skills that we have as a department that we need to train on every year or several times a year. This is the shift commander's office. Uh, the Ames Fire Department has three shift commanders, uh, one for each A, B, and C shift. We uh, see over the three lieutenants that are housed at the three different stations. We are primarily responsible for making the schedule for the day and making sure we have enough people and that our people are where they need to be. We would be the incident commander at any large scale incidents, including motor vehicle accident with personal injury or a structure fire. Uh, we also will go to other calls that seem interesting or where we think that they might need some assistance. This is our kitchen and dining room area, and every morning after the lieutenant meets with the shift commander, he or she then meets with their crew to schedule the day for that particular station. Uh, while the shift commander gives them the information of what has to happen that day, each individual station will have their own schedule that they have to run each day. Since we work 24-hour shifts, we also have to eat here, uh, so we plan our meals every morning um, at the table. Some crews eat the same meal all together and others will eat, bring in their own things. We then make a list of what we need and send the rescue uh, to the grocery store to pick up the items. Everybody pitches in their own money um, and it's divided out every day so that everybody only pays what their share is. It's kind of something different that most places of employment wouldn't do, but that's something that we have to do here. This area is also used for some training. They might do a tabletop exercise or just discuss a call that they had recently. So it's really just a great meeting place uh, that really brings the crew together. So this is the lieutenant's office, um, also our radio dispatch office. This is where we uh, plan our days and use a computer to write reports. Um, every time the crew goes out on a call, we have to write a report about it. Um, also, this has our all our radios, and this is how we keep in contact with dispatch and other units out on incidents. This is Station One's day room where we have meetings and classes, and it also converts into a lounging area for after hours. You're now in Station One's dorm where we sleep during our 24-hour stay. We have some that are individual and some rooms that are shared. This is Station One's workout room, one of my favorite rooms in the entire station. Uh, this is where we stay in shape. Something pretty neat about Station One 
is we are the only station that has fire poles. This fire pole helps me get to the truck room really fast. This is station one truck room where we house our motor vehicles to respond to medical emergencies. Thank you for watching our tour. If you'd like any more information, please feel free to call us or visit our website at cityofames.org slash fire.